So, in section 2.3, you guys drew reasonable graphs relating to real-world variables. So now, we are going to actually come up with an equation to relate to real, to real-world variables. And we're going to use this equation to predict uh, one thing, one variable, when the other one is known. So, for this first example, uh, it says, as you drive home from the football game, the number of kilometers you are away from home depends on the number of minutes you have been driving. Assume that distance varies linearly with time. Suppose that you are 11 kilometers from home when you have been driving 10 minutes, and 8 kilometers from home when you have been driving for 15. So, the things you want to first notice about this is they give you the independent independent variable. It says explicitly that the number of kilometers you are away from home depends on the number of minutes you have been driving. The second thing you want to notice is that um, it says that you are 11 kilometers from home when you've been driving for 10 minutes. Whoops. You are 11 kilometers from driving for 10 minutes and then 8 kilometers from when you've been driving for 15. So they're actually giving you two specific points with a um, distance and a time. So the first part of this problem is they want you to define variables for distance and time and sketch the graph. So we're going to say then for part A that um, we're going to let D, for part A we're going to let d equal the the number of kilometers from home and then we're going to let t equal let's see we're going to let t equal the number of minutes that you've been driving So then to sketch a reasonable graph, we're going to first set up our axes. And we're going to let, since it says that um, the number of kilometers you are away from home depends on the number of minutes you have been driving, time is going to be the independent variable and distance is going to be the dependent variable. So we're going to plot time here and label this T and distance here, d. And then, they actually gave us two points. Going back to the original problem, it says that suppose you are 11 kilometers from home when you've been driving for 10 minutes, and 8 kilometers when you've been driving for 15. So, really, we can label those at points. Since time is the independent variable, we can label time first, and that is going to be uh, the first one would be 10, 11, because at 10 minutes you are 11 kilometers from home. And the second one would be um, 15, 8, because at 15 minutes you are 8 kilometers at home. Then we can plot these two points on the graph. So to set up a scale, we'll probably scale by 5s for time. So we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20. And then we're probably going to want to scale for by fives for distance as well. So we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20. So at 10 minutes from driving, um, 10 minutes of driving, they're 11 kilometers from home. So we'll put that point here. And at 15 minutes of driving, they're 8 kilometers from home. So we'll put that right here. And now we know that this is going to be a straight line because it varies linearly with time. So we can connect these points and then just continue it for uh, um, to both the time and distance intercepts. So part B wants us to find the particular equation expressing distance in terms of time. So the first thing that we're going to have to remember for, um, for writing the equation is we need to find the slope. Now to find the slope, we have to remember in the original problem, we're actually given two points. And that is at 10 minutes, they're 11 kilometers from home. And at 
um, 15 minutes, they are late or they are 8 kilometers from home. So to find the slope, we have these two points, so we can just use the definition of slope. And that is that m equals, and we're going to have 8 minus 11 over 15 minus 10. So the slope here is going to be negative 3 fifths. Then we already have, um, a, we have two points here, so we can actually write this equation in point slope form using either of the points. So we're going to use the first point, um, 10, 11. So we want dis we're writing an equation for distance in terms of time, so we're going to have d minus 11 equals negative 3 fifths times t minus 10. At which point, because we want distance in terms of time, we prob they probably want it in slope-intercept form. So we need to distribute the negative 3 fifths in and then move the 10 over. So we'll have d minus 11 equals negative 3 fifths t minus, or plus, because this is a negative multiplying by a negative, um, plus 6. At which point, solving for t, we'll get d equals negative 3 fifths t plus 17. So this would be the equation relating distance in terms of time. So, part c, they want us to predict the distance from home when you have been driving for 20 and 30 minutes. So for this point, for this problem, we can actually just plug in 20 and 30 for values of t and then solve for d. So, going back to our original equation, which is d equals negative 3 fifths uh, t plus 17, for, we would just plug in um, value, the values of t equals 20 and t equals 30. So at t equals 20, we would have d equals negative 3 fifths times 20 plus 17. Then we'd have d equals, uh, it's going to be negative 12 plus 17, which is positive 5 kilometers. So at t equals 20 minutes, they're 5 kilometers from home. Then for t equals 30, we do the same exact thing, except we plug in 30 this time. So we'll have d equals negative 3 fifths times 30 plus 17. Then um, solving for d at that point, we're going to get negative 18 plus 17, which is going to be negative 1 kilometer. So at the rate they're traveling, they're at 30 minutes, they're actually going to pass their house and be 1 kilometer past their house. So for part D, we want to find when we were 7 kilometers from home. So for this, we can actually just plug in 7 kilometers for a value of distance and solve for time. So with the equation that we found, we're going to plug in 7 for distance. So we'll have 7 equals negative 3 fifths t plus 17. Then subtracting 17 from both sides, we're going to get... Um, negative 10 equals negative 3 fifths t. Then dividing by negative 3 fifths, which is the same thing as multiplying by negative 5 thirds, we're going to get t equals 50 over 3. 50 over 3 minutes. Which is approximately 16 and two-thirds of a minute. So, at 16 and two-thirds of a minute of driving, they are seven kilometers from home. So for part E, we want to find the distance intercept and what it represents in the real world. So, the distance intercept is going to be when time is equal to zero. So we can plug in zero for t here, and we'll get 17 for the distance intercept. 
or because that's sort of like the y-intercept. So distance intercept equals 17 kilometers. So what this means in the real world, now the distance intercept is when t equals zero, and t here is the time since we started driving. So before that, so that what this distance intercept means is before they started driving, they were 17 kilometers from home. So before leaving, they were 17 kilometers from home. So part F wants the time intercept and what this represents in the real world. So to do this problem, the time intercept is when distance is going to equal zero. So we're going to substitute in zero for distance and solve for t. So we'll have zero equals negative three-fifths t plus 17, or three-fifths t equals 17. So to get time by itself, we're going to need to multiply both sides of the equation by five-thirds. And then solving for t, we get 28 and one-third. So what this means is since it's when distance is equal to zero and here distance is representing the distance from home, this really means that um, it takes 28 and one third minutes to get home because at time 28 and one third you are home. So, or your distance from home is zero. So what this means in the real world is it takes 28 and one third minutes to get home. So part G wants to know in what domain does the linear function give you reasonable answers? So for this we want to think about really the domain we're talking about uh, which domain represents the independent variables value so here's time we want to talk about the time that we leave and the time that we get home so really a reasonable domain would be um, from 0 to 28 and 1 third because 0 is before we started driving or is when we start driving and we want that to be less than or equal to t which would be less than or equal and we would choose 28 and 1 third because at 28 and one third, we'd arrive at home. So any value past that, we would just it would be past when we would get home. So for part h, we want to figure out what the units of of the slope are, and based on these units, we want to figure out what this represents in the real world and what the significance is of it being negative. So to do that, we're gonna look back at the graph. So we have time on the in, as the independent variable and distance as the dependent variable. And slope really is rise over run or the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. So it's really going to be um, slope here is going to be the change in distance, so delta d, over the change in time. Now the units of distance here are in kilometers. And the time, uh, the units of time here are in minutes. So that means that the um, the units of slope um, are kilometers per minute. Units of slope equals the per is another word for division. So it's kilometers per minute. So the significance of of these of the units of slope really is the fact that we're getting speed from the slope of distance over time. So um, really what we have here is that speed equals the slope of distance over time. And that the fact that it's negative, 
proves that the distance is decreasing by negative three. Um, um, is decreasing at neg at three fifths kilometers per minute. So really, the sp the speed that um the speed that the car is traveling e is three fifths kilometers per minute. But the fact that it's negative shows that he's getting closer to home, so that it is decreasing at 3 fifths kilometers per minute. So that concludes this section on mathematical models. Really, all these problems from this section have been split up into particular steps. So the main thing here is you want to recognize in the problem that they're usually going to give you an independent or dependent variable or tell you which one is which, but if they don't, you can figure it out based on logic because one variable is going to depend on the other. From there, you, you're, they're going to probably give you some points in the information, so you want to recognize those. And then using that information, you can write an equation. And then once you have that equation, all the steps are just based off that equation and substituting values and recognizing intercepts.